for you. Sitting here on a Friday night, I um, got my splint, <laughs> got liberated from my splint um, two days ago. The surgeon could not believe how well I have done and he was really apologetic for all the things I cannot do yet. And I was like, do you not understand that I went for like entire years at times not able to even move that arm? I'd walk around like a bird with a broken wing. And, you know, when it would feel better for a day, I'd do something idiotic, like go, you know, and sweep, mop, deep clean the entire floors of the house. And then I couldn't move it for another six months, you know. So as it was when you went, went in there, so you know how people have bursitis, my whole bursa was shredded. How people have um, tendonitis, my tendons were frayed in there. Um, they had to reattach the bicep, the bicep muscle wasn't there, um, wasn't where it needed to be. The rotator cuff tear itself was a full thickness and it had grown this bone spur. It was like looked kind of like a shark tooth. So every time that, you know, I would move my arm and whatnot, it was shredding more and going more and more and causing more injury. And that's why it would get stuck and inflamed and whatnot. So um, there were things that, although I went through, you know, if you combined it, probably a couple of years of physical therapy, there was things that were never going to get repaired. And that bone spur had to be cut out. The bicep had to be retached where the bursa was needed to be all cleaned out and so just a lot of stuff so I can do a lot I can't do my bra hook um and because I'm built like oh a big breasted American female I can't um my my freaking bras are k-cups not even kidding I'm a 42k and I'm five foot tall do you know how many times I fall down just because I I am built like a freaking turkey because that happens right Right? I'm talking like, you know, who the MS. But anyway. Um, so it's not like I have the option of getting a bra that's like a sports bra that can be pulled over or a front hook or anything like that. You know, I have to have these big bulletproof, aerodynamically challenged, boulder holders from hell. Um, so I, I need to, you know, have the back hooks and I just can't do it. And, um, it's tough. My wrist lost a lot of strength and because I was cheating and typing, I was putting it at a weird angle. So I have um, some problems with my wrist right now that we're trying to fix. And, you know, the doctor was like, well, or the surgeon was like, well, did you get the nerve block and everything? I'm like, no, no, no. He's like, they do the nerve block before surgery. I was like, I'm well aware. And I told that lady to go find somebody else to go and stick that needle up because I was not in the mood to be hurt any more than I was. I refused a nerve block and I just, I've just been through too many with all my chronic pain issues and whatnot. Um, it was kind of a big thing for a while where the nerve blocks were, because they can get a lot of money for them in insurance kickbacks. If you come in with chronic pain, they write your prescription for pain pills. It really doesn't do anything for the patient nor the provider. Um, although people existed and were able to function like that for years. Of course, we have the people who abuse that, blah, blah, blah. But we do have the people who could function. So what they found out was to do these, because then regular doctors didn't want to prescribe pain pills anymore because they felt the CDC and the DEA was after them, kind of like a witch hunt, right? So they started these pain clinics and they became, I mean, they call them pill mills, but they weren't because you had to go through a three ring circus. You had to go through behavioral therapy, physical therapy. <clears throat> you had to get these God awful injections and then they would give you a limited amount of pain pills, which were lower than you would ever be able to cover your pain with. And they were doing them in the long acting because the short actings are the ones that people want on the street, as they say. So it became a mess for people who are in chronic pain. And I did a different route, which we'll talk about some other day. But what I wanted to say was thank you for all of your prayers because I know that that's what made the difference. I mean, who else can say that they had an easy 800 people praying for their success in a surgery? Can't. And that I, it's just all your good wishes and your prayers mean more to me than you'll ever, ever know. So thank you so much. I had angels with me in that surgery room. I know it. Um, 
really funny because this this an, the anesthesiologist who came in, she was really like the coolest person on the planet. She came in, and I mean, like she is freaking intense. She comes in right before they're getting ready to wheel me out, right? She's got needles and syringes all in her pocket. She gets right in my face, like two inches from my face. Introduces herself to my husband and then comes to me and she's like, okay, how are you? I'm like, I'm okay. Getting that kind of feeling like maybe I should flee. And she's like, that's what I've got this for. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this right now. I'm going to give you this. It's going to make you forget everything. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this with love. Okay, honey, we're going to do this with love. And Jesus is going to be right here with us. And we're going to say a little prayer. And we're going to have all the angels we want. And we're going to have all the drugs that they want us to give you. Because you're not going to hurt gonna regret this we're gonna get down here okay you're starting to forget everything honey and she's like an inch from my face I'm like I'm forgetting everything from but your face ma'am sure whatever right so they're they're wheeling me down and um I'm like you know that stuff you said that was supposed to make me forget everything she's like uh-huh I'm like it didn't work she's like that's why we have more honey she's like this is the place where you can have anything you can have anything right now that you want we're gonna do this with love this is with love and all the angels were all the angels she said all the angels were there and the nurses were came around like right when she called you know for the angels and they're all like hi how are you honey we're gonna make sure you don't feel any of this you're gonna be okay and I'm like so what about those shows that people are still awake when they live it and that's all I remember I was out I was out until recovery and then recovery was horrifying because I hurt so bad and it was just these it was literally they had the two guys in recovery because I think that they had the personality of dealing with people who are unconscious because I was begging for help I was begging and begging and begging for help help because I hurt so freaking bad and the guy is like we've already given you all the medication you're fine and I'm like I'm not I'm not, I'm not feeling any of it. And I was like, I just want to go home then. You're not going to, I want to go home. And I'm like, you want to go home? I'm like, yeah, I want to go home. And so then I remember my husband driving me home. We got me in bed and um, I was kind of had to check out. My pain meds that were supposed to be given were denied by my insurance. And of course, um, by the time the appeals and everything um, came in for my doctor, that was... 24 hours later and starting on a weekend. So I had zero pain pills, zero pain, anything until Monday. And I had that surgery on a Wednesday. So it was a really tough few days. I had to just mentally check out and just be like, okay, this is, this is, this is how it would be. Of course, nothing could work right. Nothing that we planned could ever work right. Right. You know, nothing. So I just have to, what am I going to do? Cry, scream, go to the ER. No. I'm just going to resign myself to it. And by the time the three days were done and I'd already gotten through the worst of it and they got everything all done through my insurance and I could have, you know, whatever pain meds I wanted, I said I didn't want them. I already figured it out how to deal with things by myself. Thank you. No, no, thank you. Um, I did accept a little bit of Vistaril to just kind of get me through that point when it was too, too much. Um, but from that point, all I've done is Tylenol. Um, I have my medications for chronic pain which treat my chronic pain. They were not supposed to be treating the other. We'll talk about that at some point. But um, it was rough. It was rough. And because then I had this to come over here, over here, from my bedroom to my office to kind of check out and, and focus on something else and talk to all of you out there, I was able to do this. And I thank you so much for being there. You don't know how much you make a difference to me. When I see your amazing comments, when you guys write me the emails and when I can actually get to my email and I read something amazing from you, do you know how that makes me feel? It makes me feel so freaking amazing. It makes me feel like I'm listened to and I'm heard and I thank you so much for that. There's nothing better. And um, now there are some problems that I have with the discovery. I felt the discovery was going to wrap this, this, and this up. I thought that, you know, he was going, I thought that, you know, Christopher was going to just flip out one night and come out and be like, you know what? I did the entire freaking thing. I'm just a mad dog and I just did it. And they're like, okay, yeah, well, what do you want to do about that? Oh, I just want to sit in a cell for the rest of my God-given life. I'm like, oh, sure. Well, the Rusics say that they don't want you to, you know, have the death penalty because one more death than this. And he is like, of course they wouldn't let me just die. They want to be able to torture me. Sure, whatever, bring it on. Nothing different than what I've been dealing with for eight years. All right, there you go. 
I'll sign anything. Goodbye. And it was like, oh, okay, that's how we wrap this up. Oh. Oh. We see that Tam Burgor spent her time interviewing any and all people who could verify that Christopher Watts had taken CPR safety classes for his work. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything when you're in shock. I, in my own opinion, believe his first confession. Okay, I realize that after sentencing, when Coder and Tam Burglar wanted another little publicity tour, they went to Wisconsin and they had him tell them in details about how he did all four. And I think that this is my opinion, and I know I'm going to get jumped for it. But you know what? At this point, I've spent over 500 hours researching the Watts case, so I'm a subject matter expert. Oh, God, some clip channel is going to say that. <laughs> but you know what? When you spent 500 hours researching every single detail that you can, and you're not stopping, then you can come and have a, a level discussion with me, and we can talk about how this doesn't fit here, this doesn't fit there. But when you've only read the headlines that were made to make other people rich, and you bought it, because you're that naive and you can only think of black and white, go f yourself, okay? Because I am not saying what happened that night justifies anything. What I am saying is that there was a point of no return for either of them. And that happened that night. Explain to me why her blood alcohol level was three times that of the legal limit. She walked in that house. She slammed down whatever it was. She went upstairs and she went to go and create whatever hell she wanted to. And that's what happened. There was no sleeping, him waking her up. No, 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 no. She walked in that door. He may have been sleeping. She may have went through his phone. Heard about the secret calculator app. I don't know. But whatever happened that night is different than the way that she had been treating him for eight years. Whatever happened that night is different than the way that he had treated her for eight entire years. Did he have an affair in the end? Yes. But how would your husband respond to you being pictured with another man that you go out of town as many times as you can and you use his money behind his back to do rather than making the house payment is the punishment for that death no but is the punishment life in prison without the possibility of parole okay for somebody who walks in on somebody just unaliving your two children. There's something called manslaughter. Something called justifiable homicide. Okay? There are a lot of things that did not happen. Due process, trial by jury of your peers. Yeah, he signed it away, but why? Maybe because he was denied getting all of the mail from the people that he loved, that told him that they loved him no matter what and that he needs to fight. He has nothing to lose. They piled all of that on his bed after he did what they said that he would do in accepting responsibility for all. Baumhover, he checked out Trent Bolt and the other one who claimed that they had an affair. So what? If either. And you know what? Did they charge Trent Bolt? with lying and interfering with the investigation and charge him with the loss of man power hours that could have been used to help people who really needed it? No. What about the other one who openly admitted that she just put something in there just to screw up people's minds? Was she charged? No. No, no, no. When people come for me, they don't even know what they're talking about because they're using what the other side did wrong. 
They come for me because I tell the truth that the Rusiks got insurance on the girls. Sandra Rue had a bad dream she woke up from, and she said this in an interview. Hopefully a more talented creator can put together so you guys can read it. Attention. Dave, you're talented. Neeks Peaks, you're talented. Please show Sandra Honorati's Rusik's own words where she said that she had a nightmare and she woke up. And her nightmare was that Christopher Watts had unalived all of her girls and that he poured oil on them because he works with oil tanks. She got up that very day and she got life insurance policies on all those girls. That's what she did with those thoughts. Have you ever been in a position where you've been beaten down so low, so many times, that people say that your worst, the grossest worst thing that you could ever do was what you were gonna do. And so you just give up and you resign to it and you're like, fine, that's what you think of me and that's what you think I'm gonna do. Here you go, here you go. Let's say that somebody was always calling you a thief and the people who were supposed to love you who even the person in your house was always like, you're a thief. You're a thief. I know, I know you're just stealing. I know you steal. You're a thief. You're a dirty thief. In one of these days, you're going to steal. And you're going to get caught. And you're going to go to jail. And you just keep doing the best you can. You know? Somebody keeps, if somebody tells you that, you're just a dirty, rotten thief. You're a thief. Nothing you can do. No matter how honest you are. No matter that, you know, you would never think of doing anything in the way of stealing. That you... You earn everything honestly. And then one day, you just had too much. You say, fuck it all. And you just steal. And there you go. They had cameras all set up so that because they just knew that you were. And there you go. And there you are. And you're charged with theft. And all of them are like, see? See? That is what happened with Christopher Watts. They put it in his mind so much that when he walked in, and everything happened. Now let me tell you a little thing here. Because I want to say something. I want to say something. But I want to preface it. Because I am getting ridiculed. For when I. Am vulnerable. And I share things about myself. I don't do that. For any other reason. Other than to say here that I do have two bachelor's degrees, one in criminal justice, one in psychology. I'm halfway through my master's in forensic psychology, okay? I started law school, I was unable to finish it because I had septic shock and I lost 80% of, of the peripheral nerves in my feet and hands. I'm lucky to be alive, I had a massive heart attack. I was 36 with six kids. I couldn't finish law school, okay? So then in 1996, when I was just pregnant with my third child and working in oncology, and I was in my nursing program, my latex allergy went from bad to worse and I started having anaphylactic shock every time I went into work. I was ahead of the game in 1996 and everything was latex. And although most places say, oh, they're all latex free, there's still things that very much have latex. My physical therapist just put on this uh, tape on me the other day that said latex free. Yeah, well, I'm all wilted and blistered right now because the adhesive was not latex free. So, my face has hives. My face is all swollen from that right now. But even balloons, I can't be around, you know, balloons. That can cause me anaphylaxis. It's an airborne, latex is an airborne allergy. So, I'm half a nurse partial attorney. I was the president of my law and justice program. I, um, I don't know. I guess that's not enough education for anybody to think that I know my ass from a hole in the ground, but you know what I mean? The other day I went into Reddit 
I'm kicked out of almost all forums, Chris Watts, because I keep trying to import facts and that cannot be done there. They are all run by the narrative. And so I was so excited because this one um, person said, listen to Queen of the Dirty South by Tabitha Jane. She's amazing and I love her. And it was seconded. And it was like, oh my gosh, I've made it big. They talked about me on the Reddit. And it was soon followed by, let's see here, this C word who um, had just started her profile the day before two days before so if somebody says something nice about me and then what do you know someone jumps in and let's see I guess I didn't even screenshot all of her manifesto but I did read this much And it says something like, it says, named after Shanana, the band. I'm sorry if you're the creator, but this woman seems mentally ill. They're talking about me here. This, not there, but this bitch named Katya Charms or whatever. So she's talking about me. She says, she says to the other person or whatever that, you know, I'm sorry if you're the creator, but this woman seems mentally ill. Most of us on here criticize SW for the abusive and ne neglectful treatment of the girls. But this woman just obsesses on and on about teenage Shanann's bubble butt and her powers of seduction and how she uses her sexuality to get men wrapped around her finger and how she envisioned herself to be Veronica with jet black hair. SW was sort of blonde in high school and was kind of a nerd and there's no way to get into her head to see just how seductive she thought she was. This narrator sounds frustrated and jealous, like maybe she's Hisham's wife or something. Such a turnoff. An hour of talking about her horrible childhood and how that qualifies her to be an authority on the inner workings of SW's mind is also totally bizarre. A lot of us have had horrific childhoods, but we don't force people to listen to the entire story as we prepare to talk about how frickin' sexy an adolescent SW was. Just totally bizarre. This woman needs help. Wow. Believe me when I tell you I don't give you a thumbnail sketch of what happened to me as a child. Believe me, believe me. However, based on my life experience, having two bachelor's degrees and whatnot, I don't know what this woman possesses, but that was an awfully personal attack on me. Almost as if it was a person who would like I don't know. Says they have the IQ of a Mensa graduate. That person is jealous of me. That person has nothing to draw on. That person lied about saying that many of us have had childhood. Because if you had a childhood like mine and you choose to divulge some of it to show how you can relate or how you can be vulnerable or have empathy in what you see in somebody's behavior, such as Bella. And this person has no empathy. I'm very suspicious of people who come around and write a very large manifesto about my work. When that person first said in there, that my video was all messed up because everybody knows that SW's family was Polish, not Italian. 
she missed the part where it said it's 80-20. I'm not trying to get sued. If you want to go out there and give your best effort on what happened and use names and everything that's likeness, go the fuck ahead. But I'm not trying to get taken to court. All I have to get, uh, you know what, I can get sued. And like I say, all I can give them is my student loan debt. I don't have anything. I don't want to get sued by trying to tell the whole story so that the story that is yet untold may be heard by somebody else before it's too late. What in the world would make somebody think that I was jealous of her? I've said SW is a beautiful woman in her own right. I have no doubt she had that kind of charisma that she could make anybody think or do anything she wanted to. Those weren't insults. I made up a story so that people could get it in their mind of how it could have happened. And she did dye her hair jet black. I don't know when she began doing that. The other attack I got this week was, how do I know that she took her brother to prom? I'm such a loser, blah, blah, blah. Well, because she said so. It's not a big deal. And I explained in there that my friend is gorgeous beyond means. I mean... She was one year younger than me. And just so freaking gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Um, she was, I mean, I think I told you guys, like, we'd go to a concert. And she'd be identified by security right away. And they'd take her in the back to wait for the band. That was in the late 80s. She was that kind of beautiful. I mean, freaking just gorgeous, right? And, I mean, she should have had a modeling contact contract but she has a weird very shy personality and to this day she's not married she doesn't have the personality to really go with her looks and so she couldn't find anybody to go out with her to prom so she took her sister's boyfriend just to be there so she could hang out with us you know go get pictures and whatnot and it was no problem because her little sister didn't care like you know Take him. I have to work. He looks good in a picture. Go. Have fun. If it was a little brother and you're hanging out with friends, now they all go stag. They don't even do like we did. You know, they all just go as crowds and stuff. I'm not sitting there spending hours making fun of her eyebrows and everything else like some people do, okay? I've had some pretty bad, messed up eyebrows myself. I've just had to let them go now. But as I was a product model for many, many salons um, that opened up and that were waxing um, salons and others for that, um, I was blessed with that opportunity of being a wax model. And I could get full body waxing whenever I wanted because I had more time than I had money. And I let people who didn't have any experience practice on me. So I learned how to let my eyebrows go and let the professionals handle it. And now that, you know, I'm 50, I have, you know, just very kind of like that don't really grow in like they used to. So, or maybe that's from me over plucking, but I mean, I had the over plucked eyebrows. Like seriously, I look at it and I'm like going, whoa, I'll have to show you guys a picture of that when I can show you guys who I am one of these days. Um, but her mom was a beautician. So why did she not just have her mom shape her eyebrow? Oh, that's right. Because her and her mom didn't get along. And once her mom slapped her, when she was 18. She didn't go back to the freaking house for how long she made friends with them when she needed somebody to be on her side for the freaking wedding. And then she got out of town because she was being accused of embezzling. It was not about that stupid lawsuit over consumer rights and the, 
um, Fair Debt Collection Act. It was not that. She was accused of handling a large sum of money that may or not have appeared in a traveling suitcase later to have gotten a down payment on a home. That could never happen in today's world. You can't come out with a suitcase of cash. You have to show how you got that cash. But if your parents gifted you it, you have to show your parents that. Parents have had to have claimed it, you know, in their capital gains. It's a, you know, because of that. Because of people like her. But anyway. Um, let's see how else I got attacked this week. Um, there was something, something about how nobody says that he may not be the father of Cece, except for creators who are, creators who are like me, who are getting all the money and hits. I'm going to stand on record again and tell you, I have never made a cent on anything on line okay you idiot because the creators that these idiots do follow are the ones making the money i am under a thousand subscribers until i get over a thousand i can't get any although you guys see commercials and stuff the creators under a thousand don't get any any kickback from that so if you guys see um, ads, if you think that, or, or if these people think that, that's not what's going on. And I urge them to get their own channel, work their way up to a thousand, and then see what it's like. Go and, and start your own channel and, and do your manifestos and whatever. Otherwise, just fuck up and get on the bus because I'm telling you, it's not easy. I have spent, I keep every note that I take. I have volumes of notes, you know, and and research it, and, and you guys know that I would cite from books in the beginning, and when I do cite a source, I tell you. So what hits am I getting? What hits am I getting? Whether it's dislike or like, it's still engagement. And what money have I made? Not one freaking penny. You know who makes money? Is the people who are lying right now, and the people who are getting paid to go out to every freaking home and and terrorize it and everything and then the smaller creators we take all of the blame for that when those witch hunts begin they come after us because those big ones they don't care they're laughing all the way to the bank and they do not care about this so they go for the smaller creators just to go for the jugular with us because you know i don't know it gets i, I would never go to somebody's page and just like write out something so terrible or on reddit when somebody simply recommends my video but you know what you want to know what the good thing is is that because of that i've gotten 20 more subscribers so maybe 20 other people saw you know what maybe i'll check her out maybe she's not that bad so i uh saw and I love all of the good comments you guys give me because you guys have to know that for every good comment and there's things I don't let you guys see there I do have some things held back and I don't ever even let them show um, and that's the truth of what happens when you let yourself be vulnerable that's why others don't but because I do share things I believe that there are more of me out there more of us than there are of them and those ones are jealous because their parents sent them to school and whatnot nobody listens to what they say because they have no relevancy they have no character they could be book smart and whatever score this on an iq thing but they're dumber than a rock when it comes down to the real world you know and i hope that maybe dave or something could show how the rue six sandra Andrade, herself said that she bought the insurance policy on the girls. She had, it was like the horse races when she called in. She'd get a huge payout if it was true that Christopher Watts did what she envisioned him to do. Well, let me tell you, let me share another one that I got that was 
really gross. And you guys have already been on it. I didn't see what this bitch had done. Tina Inman. Tina Inman. So she did this all in caps, okay? So I'm going to, you know, um, do all of the in caps. Because this is the, 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 the um, and it was three months ago. So let's see, where was I three months ago? Well, I've been dealing with my rotator cuff for two months. Before that, what, I had COVID again and everything. So this kind of comes after me when I'm like that. So anyway, let's see here. Tina Inman says. Ready? All in caps. Oh, this part is not in caps because she goes to the next thing. And then here we go. So this part is not in caps. The first sentence goes. I think what you're trying to do. I think what you're doing is trying to get a lot of. Here we go. Subscribers. Bye. Talking about the dead victims, and that's very wrong. If you wanted to say anything, why didn't you do it while she was alive? It's pretty bad when you have to talk about the dead and down them and say no wonder he snapped. Would you like for someone to state that about you or a daughter of yours? If you have one, I'll say this. It's not going to score you any points with Chris. I'll say that for you. Do you really think that makes you a better person for downing them? I say no. Her and Chris was married for eight going on years, oh, going on nine years when he met trouble. You get that? Did you get that sentence there? Because this is how brilliant Tina Inman is. Because it says here that her and Chris was married for eight going on nine year when he met trouble. This is all in caps too. He stated that it would have never happened if he had not met the girlfriend. Well, it shouldn't have anyway. He wanted a boy and the Lord was giving him that gift, but no, he had to listen to the devil. And the devil led him right into prison. So who's at fault for that? He could have waited until the children was in bed and talked to his wife about whatever but chose not to. He would not even go to counseling with two L's. Tina Inman, you freaking brilliant. Wonder of the world. Counseling. That it, that was a no. You know why? Because of the devil. So it's not going to prosper anything at all to talk about her. Hold oh, please. Maybe you need to sweep out from under your own back door instead of putting her down. Give credit where credit is due. She didn't take his anything away. He done it on his own by killing them. More than likely a little help. So judge not lest ye be judged. Shame on you. Okay. Okay. Did she not just judge me? Did she not just judge me and shame on me? Oh, shame on you, Tina Inman, for not knowing what the hell you're talking about. So Tina at Tina Inman 4064. No subscribers, no videos. You make your own channel. You got it right here. You got your own channel. You got your own little, you know, handle at Tina In Inman 4064. You know, you got everything all set up. Just go on there and freaking set yourself up and just talk go ahead and, and say this to everybody and then you can have all of your little shiner group get around you and light up their flashlights and everything and not know what they're talking about none of what she just said makes any sense do the facts and the truth at all she's that naive to believe that I really don't understand. And then to for her um, defense to be that who could have made it happen? Satan? Did you want Satan to come in your marriage? Hmm, who could have? I mean, like, honestly, like, reading this, I'm like, are you from an SNL parody? Like, are you, are you serious? Shame on me. Now, let me see here. Tina in my new freak. Anyway, let me see here. So I'm trying to get a lot of subscribers. Well, that's what I'm doing. Hmm. 
Am I getting a lot of subscribers by talking about what happened about the Watts? That's probably the worst topic I could do right now. Or in the last year or four years. That's probably the one that is the most controversial and is going to get me the, the most hate. I'm certainly not just busting through the roof like a rocket getting subs because I am trying to show that this wasn't black and white. People don't know the truth and I'm trying to get them to see the truth. Okay? If they believe that this just happened, and he said, yeah, it wouldn't have happened had I not got a girlfriend. He did say that. He said something to the effect that what? Oh, I don't know. But it wasn't in the ways that she is making it sound. I don't know what sound bite she heard, but um, anybody can say anything that they want about me, Okay. If she's asking me how would I like it if people talked about me when it, when I'm not here and saying that about me and my husband and my daughter, come my daughter again, I'll, anyway. Anyway. I have no fears about what anybody's going to say. I don't have a friend coming to take the mail so that my husband doesn't see it. Every meal my husband makes me to this day, buys me to this day groceries that he buys, I thank him. He earns the money. He is the sole provider. I let him handle his own money. He has asked me to handle it, and I have said no. When I was good enough, healthy enough, to be working for periods at a time, I gave it to him to pay down the credit cards that we've had to use because I can't contribute in the way that I wish I could. I don't have anything to hide from my husband. I don't do that. And I've been with this husband for 22 years and the one before I was with for 13 years. Either of them can come and say anything that they want, especially if it's true. There are not going to be endless things on Facebook that anybody can dispute. I'm not pinching my kids. I never locked them up flowers in the attic style. I'm not going to die with blood alcohol level three times that of the legal limit. I can't stand alcohol like you guys know. It doesn't work. None of my six children, God forbid anything would have happened to them, would have tested positive for amphetamine. And I never ever once gave them Benadryl to get them to go to sleep, let alone force Benadryl and Tylenol down their throats. When my doctor suggested singular for one of my children, I said, no, it's too new. It's too broad. Symptoms of asthma that my child has are very manageable. And I refused that. She didn't refuse that for Cece. Though Cece was taking singular, omeprazole, Tylenol and Benadryl that were not supposed to be given to her under that age. That she was not telling the doctor about. And I never once went. And was like, am I being a good mommy? I want to make sure I'm being a good mommy. Because I was too busy being a good one, not talking about it. My house is clean. You want me to go sweep under the back door? Go. All my windows, my back door, my front door is open. Come ask me any question. Go interview my ex-husband. Interview this one. Go through my financials. I have nothing to hide. Nothing. Anybody wants to ask me anything about what I've ever done in my life, go ahead. But I'm not going to blame it on Satan. I'm not going and be like, hey, how about if I do the money now because I'm selling Tupperware. Go out and go out of town um, twice a month now because I've earned all this by selling this. And don't look at all these boxes that are coming downstairs because, you know, I'm just going to wheel and deal them. And then have a friend get the mail because unknowingly he was paying for all of my flights to go out of town and have pictures taken with other men. Girls nights out, sure, I'd take them along for a couple of them because, you know, why not? 
come on. I never once had anybody live in my house to take care of my kids and go and prop myself up. I waited until all my kids were grown to get the injuries I have fixed, the ones that couldn't wait. I had to take care of them the next day. I had a C-section from the twins and my next youngest had just turned one. I had him on my hip while I was vacuuming because people were coming to see the twins. It was like five days after I had my C-section. The twins were in the NICU. No one was taking care of me. They came in, they wanted to give support, talk to me, see how I was doing. Am I still gonna vacuum my house? I'm sure I ripped some stitches. But you know what? Who was gonna who was gonna change my baby? Who was going to bathe him? Because my husband was in the military. He wasn't home. You wanna come for me, know the facts. Know that I have nothing to hide. Know the fact that I'm scared to death of a legal system that did what it did to the biggest high profile case in the nation. If they can do this and not fear that anybody's gonna ask questions about it, you're part of the problem, Tina Inman. Fucking twat. Anyway, let's see here. So that's why your comments that you guys do are so amazing to me. I appreciate them more than you know. This has been a hard week on creators because of the the high profile cases that the tragedy pimps run after, they don't give the whole backstory. They give the little media nuggets, just no different than MS, you know, multiple um, <laughs> mainstream media. They know what sells. And the people like Tina Inman are feeding it because they believe that. Um, and then let me see here. What else did I see here? Something else telling me that, oh, yeah, they know that what I was saying wasn't true because Shining Light just said it wasn't. Well, you know who Shining Light is? Well, if not me. Here, I'm pulling up MGL. I'm eating my favorite cookie in the world. This is Mrs. Myers. Let's see. Yes, they are from Trader Joe's. You guys have to go in there just for these. They're just so weird because they're in the refrigerated section. And so, like, Trader Joe's has, like, all the stuff in their freezers. You walk by, and then above they have, like, a cookies and crackers. And you have to look for these. They're, like, I think they're by, by the ginger cookies, but the ginger cookies are those spicy kind of ginger that you don't like. I don't know if you guys like, but I don't. Um... And so they're called um, Cookie Thins, Meyer Lemon. And I thought that it said Mrs. Meyer. But they are the best. They're so thin. And here's what it even says about them. Cookie Thins. Meyer Lemon. How can a cookie be so astonishingly thin, yet so chocked full of lemony goodness? It's our time-honored world recipe straight out of the days of yore. We've scoured the universe for abundantly juicy lemons and fresh ingredients to squeeze into these thrilling thins. Here are some lemon-loving facts to whet your appetite. Now think about this. It says, 19th century sailors used lemons to help maintain good health. Sounds good to us. Yeah, because they ate lemons and oranges to ward off scurvy. And then it says, during the European Renaissance, fashionable ladies used lemon juice to redden their lips. Well, sure, all that acid would. And it probably, you know, worked to kind of uh, exfoliate them as well. And then the elusive and exclusive lemon. Lemons once were once so rare, kings present gifts to each other. I just, um, oh, Let's all be careful here because 
we know who, we know who, who would not have been able to have these because it says right here that it contains wheat, egg, and milk. May contain traces of peanuts, tree nuts, soy, and sesame seeds. So many things just to have to have that as a disclaimer now. And the thing about that is, uh, I know I'm drawing from my own experience again, but because I was so incredibly small and whatnot, you know, um, the asthma, uh, the asthma I had was so bad. Um, I was what, 59, 59 pounds in fifth grade. And I think I was like four foot seven. So it's like in every single class picture you see, and then you know how they go to smallest to tallest, it'll be me always holding that sign <laughs> right next to this sign on the smallest person and smallest by far, right? So, um, and Aller just said that, you know, I'm just so allergic to every single thing. We have to take everything out. I think I told you guys that. So I'm allergic to wheat, corn, tomatoes, I have oral allergy syndromes like tomatoes, kiwi, bananas. Um, it was like no wheat, no corn, something like this. And this is in the 80s. And so they said I had to go on this elimination diet to try it because my heart was swelling. It was under so much pressure. I was going to die. I was in the hospital all the time for my terrible, terrible asthma attacks. And I had to have my nebulizer. I had to take it, you know, take my neb my big old tank around with me wherever I'd go. You know, the slumber parties, I'd be sitting there, you know, huffing in this, the corner with my albuterol and intol. Intol was this drug in the 80s. But, um, so I had to go through this elimination thing. So, like, I couldn't have any bread of any kind. We had to go to this one health store that was in our town, thank God. She had, like, carob bars and rye bread. Couldn't have, like milk or anything like that because that was like part of the problem you know for others so I mean I had like rye bread lettuce I couldn't have salad dressing because if you look through the ingredients all of them have corn syrup corn this you know chocolate has corn I mean everything there was nothing I could have so I went that with that for you know that summer or whatever and then I really don't care about it at this point I think that more of what happens to me is um it's the pollen so the pollen that's in the wheat or the pollen that gets in the corn, the pollen that's on the tomato. Because I do really good when I have like tomatoes from Walmart or like from Guatemala, but I'll react with local. So I think there's more to things like that when you look at it. But I was on allergy shots and all kinds of shots. So it was a big, big thing. Oh, I, I can't draw on my own experience to see what, um, <laughs> what Bella was going through, right? And, but even though my mom was... Um, bitch she wasn't like neurotic and didn't make other people feel like what they had in their home needed to be changed because of me I mean she wasn't the brightest light on the Christmas tree but um I can't imagine ever imposing on anybody you know when we'd have to go to the uptight grandparents house and stuff it wasn't like oh you can't have this and this and this in your house who would do that it's like if you have to have a special food, you bring your own special food. Or if the the person who's hosting, um, because my stepfather's mother was a nurse practitioner, a nurse practitioner of the jail system, and her and she was a very proper Catholic woman, and she never, I mean, even when she was dying of cancer, in the oncology ward, um, Virginia Mason the woman still was in bed with full nylons and a skirt practical shoes very it was interesting that she was a jail nurse but anyway um she was very very concerned about me and so she made sure to have like she made she was like okay you know i made this this so you can make like this nine layer salad so i want you to prepare it over there i want you to cut this this way i want you to cut this this way you know, so then this is something that you prepared and that you can, um, you can share. Is it something that, you know, is yours? So she had this big old crystal bowl for me to make, you know, the salad of things that I could eat, you know, and then have that to munch on as I wanted. And 
and I could have eggs and sausage. So, you know, she made me, you know, an egg and sausage casserole. She, she went out of her way to find things that she could make. So I was comfortable for those few days during the holiday. And that was really appreciated. But, you know, that's what a good host does. And that's, that's from also not coming in being, um, obnoxious about it. Had SW approached Cindy Watts, I have no, I, I have no doubt things would not have ever went in the way that they were, but in the same way that SW accused CW of ridiculous things, they did it to the whole family. Like, so, like one of you commented so beautifully that SW didn't have enough friends that would come to some bridal party for her, for her new husband. All of, okay, in a divorce, people go one side or the other. So you have, she just came out of, divorce, of a divorce and she was with, you know, the first husband for what, five, seven years, whatever. So then those friends, if they had any, which I really haven't heard of, um, probably wouldn't have came right to the new, new wedding festivities. And then her other friends were all from the work with Hisham. And that was right. Well, everything was being investigated for the missing amount of money. That's why nobody came. But of course, it, oh yeah, well, because because my new sister-in-law must have hidden all of the, all the invitations. If they hid the invitations, do you think that they would have went on and prepared a bunch of food? No, because they would have known that no one was going to come. And, and why would they? They just don't seem like vindictive people to me. And if she would have approached it like, you know what, hey, yeah, we're coming out and we're going to bring the girls. So um, the things that they can have are these, you know, that won't aggravate their allergies so they don't get sick and everything. Would that be good? And especially with as good as she was on the Internet, she could say, you know, hey, can we get this cake from here or whatever? Or, I know it's pricier than you thought, um, but would that be OK? And they would have said, sure. But we all know it wasn't again about the ice cream. It was about the fact that Cindy was challenging her on the weird and mean and cruel ways that she taught or was treating her daughters. And, um, hello, boo. Hello, baby. No, you, oh, he's got to smell my lemon cookies. You know, smell my lemon tea. Make sure that mama's doing everything right. We went to, uh, a new hibachi place in town. And, um, I had leftovers. I had shrimp leftovers. So last night he shared Japanese food with me. He loved it. I think he, I think he single-handedly downed three big shrimp himself. I mean, he, when it's too much for him, he wants to go and hide that shrimp somewhere. He goes and he looks where he can hide it. And I'm like, boo, you can't be hiding the shrimp because it'll make it smell. What do you see, boo? Who do you see? Who's spying on us? eyes are so pretty. You look so good, boo. You're so good. He's happy my sling is not part of me anymore. He keeps trying to walk all over my shoulder. See it, see if he can heal, you know, because he's trying to heal it, right? He did my, um, my 30 day, my monthly breast check for me because he walks all over my breastages. He just walks on them when I'm sleeping. Thank you. Notice any lumps? No? There you go. Don't buy me. You, you lick that, that, you lick that. Oh, he's not being nice. He's grumpy. What? What is grumpy about? Oh. One of the things that I feel now that I've uh, told you how I don't like it when I get made fun of for divulging things about my past is is that when my mother sat back and let my stepfather do the abuse, 90% of it once I had said that I was going to go back to my my natural father my bio father in another town where they moved us away from that the abuse was too intense I called my father's best friend and his best friend and my father were going to come and get me. And I went downstairs to pack and I told my mother that they were coming. And my mother got this look in her eye that I had never seen. And between that look 
and how fast she was on me, strangling me. There was nothing. There was no time or thought process between it. And she was saying the words, if I can't have you, nobody will. My stepfather had came home for a break in his cop uniform. If I mentioned that, he was a cop. And he extricated her from me. He pulled her off my neck. I probably would have been killed that day had that not happened. But he also did not charge her. She called my father and the father's best friend, told him to turn around. Obviously, they didn't have cell phones. So... Maybe they hadn't left. I don't know how exactly that piece went, but I know that they were told not to come, that I couldn't go. I went to school the next day with bruises and cuts all over my neck from being strangled. I was sent to the school nurse. She asked who did it, and I explained, my mother. So they had CPS, Child Protective Services, come over to the school, which their office wasn't far. They came in and interviewed me and told me, told them what happened. And my stepfather didn't do anything about it. And by the time I got home that day, they had already been over there, told my parents that, you know, I had reported it. And what kind of a beating do you think I got that night for talking at home? No one was going to mess with that cop in town. That cop was uh, the detective in town by the next year, which was a promotion. So, when I divulge little things from my past, it's because I kind of know how shit goes down. I kind of uh, feel very much that Shadan went with Plan A, where she was going to go to North Carolina tell you know who the other Chris that you know that time and no no were they hooked up well, what do you know um oops we did it again <laughs> and you know what I'm here now so let's go make our family and she didn't care what kind of a mess she left behind in Colorado just like she didn't care what kind of a mess she left behind in North Carolina so many years ago well the other Chris in North Carolina was like, what are you talking about? I love my wife and my two kids. You're, you're fun when I'm out of town, but that's about it. I'm not getting married to you. You're, you're not nice. You're not a nice lady. It didn't work. It didn't work. She got rejected. What happens when a narcissist gets rejected? Well, hell breaks loose. When she wouldn't talk to Christopher during that time, it's because she couldn't hold it together. Her plan A didn't work out. For a long time, she was the one having the uh, other feelings for other people. He finally got somebody who he could be himself with when he was left all the time alone to take care of the girls. And he was doing 90% of all of the parenting as it was because she was checked out. She was disengaged. They didn't have a relationship. She had to schedule time to talk. And that was her way of trying to fix things and to give him a book. And marriage counseling, yeah, forever it was her saying no to it. She wouldn't go to it with the first husband once they identified her as the problem. So once Christopher said, no to it then she started calling his bluff and saying let's go let's go and he was like no oh let's go let's go do you think that the marriage counselor was going to be aware of all of the problems was she gonna say hey look i've been using all of the money that he makes to fund all of the airfare and i'm not actually earning these trips i'm using his money to supplement where i don't hit each month and the house and the car are in his name because 
I get a kickback for the car payment, but it's only because we're putting out so much there. So why have my friend get the mail so that he doesn't know that the house is getting foreclosed upon? And I haven't made the house, the HOA um, payments anyway for a year because why, you know, we're not going to be here. And so any day right now, the sheriff could come and kick us out on the street. And I want Chris to deal with that. And where do we begin? Do you think that's what it was going to be? Or do you think it was going to be her being all nice and innocent like she is to her friends? And being like, oh, oh he's not touching me. He did not grab my butt. I don't know. Because... The fact that she wanted to name Nico Nico gets me. Are you guys obsessed with The Handmaid's Tale like I am? I'm absolutely obsessed with that series. Because it's so real. It like, feels like it could happen, you know, with the way our society seems to go. Well, I'm going to... I don't think it's too much of a spoiler, but I'm going to tell you guys this little thing here. Okay? So... June, the concubine, handmaid, oh, what was her name? What did they call her? I don't know. <laughs> some, some ridiculous name that they had for all the handmaids. Or each one had these ridiculous, ridiculous, you know, like 17th century names. Because they went back to like 17th century living to kind of remake America in a very severe way. So June was supposed to be impregnated by the commander. The commander's wife knew that the commander couldn't get anybody pregnant. She, you know, told him too. She's like, you know, no one, God wouldn't promote your weakness. You're infertile. Nothing she wanted more was to have a baby. So she was trying anything to get her handmaid pregnant. So she had her handmaid hook up with their driver, Nick. Okay. So June and Nick did conceive. Commander and June did not. Although down the road they could have done paternity, whatever, right? So the wife, as a jab, does not name the baby Frederica after her husband Fred. The wife names the baby Nick Hole. Nick Hole because Nick the driver is the secret father of the baby. Okay? So I see this Nick Hole of going Nico. Shanann wasn't stupid. I don't know how much she knew about the affair. But Nico just isn't a name that fits with Bella and Cece. Bella, Cece, and Nico? I don't know. It's a very different name, but I'm watching The Handmaid's, the Handmaid's Tale. I'm going, oh, oh, this is very relevant. I mean, and yes, The Handmaid's Tale has some things that are, you know, offensive and occasionally I have to close my eyes. But if you go through the broad concept and you see what our society is evolving to be you see how easily something could uprise and we'd be in this too we would become Gilead um one of the things that has came out most I have to find that page again um is the the doll doll gate I was under the impression that Shanann took the um, pictures too 
because that's the way that it was. She posted it on her Facebook. Ronnie Watts cited it because he saw it on her Facebook. He was still checking it out. Cindy saw it on her Facebook. Now, if you go back to it, and I didn't want to go through all of the nerding about how each phone is tracked to each address and where it was and everything like that, but you guys can go back and see it. Um, so let's go back up here to... We're going to go back to... We're going to go... Page 1912 is, I think, Dollgate. Check this out. I know you guys were wanting to know about that. Let's see. Okay. So, here we go. It's actually on page 1913. And a discovery page 2107. So let's jot that down because this is a huge thing. And um, I think our friend Dave, you know, he, because people told me that, that Dave did a thing on it, you know. And there are different versions of the discovery as well. But you can't take the IP address. And if you see the conversation that goes, it'll make more sense. So we go back to... 19, 12, and boo, no, do not walk on the keyboard, please. Please, it's a very important thing about Dollgate. It's very important. What do you want, boo-boo? What's the matter, honey? What's the matter? Want to talk? So, what happened with the doll? Kept, um, okay, so I'm back here on, so Discovery. You guys were kind of asking about this. So, so Discovery, page 2107. And it's on, it begins on 1912 to 1913. If you go back um, to the beginning where the technician was talking about the phone dump and how he identifies each phone by whatnot, you're going to go here. And it's in the phone data review. And it says here, so at 1144 hours, it says, this image was taken by Watt's phone, which he sent to Shanann. She replied, don't know what to think about this. And in the, the brackets, as the technician stated, he has all of that and how that was. So in a trial, he would be questioned about this because, you know, it went back and forth. Like, well, is this something that Shanann did? Well, you know, and I don't know who, I don't know what kind of effed up thing this was with a doll. I've never, never, you know, you know what? At the Goodwill outlet a few months ago when I went, um, I found a little original strawberry shortcake doll and she was just mucked up sticky stuff smelled horrible and everything and I finally got around to you know washing and cleaning some of my stuff that you know I got when I couldn't use my hand and I was just doing that today but I'm telling you it's a strawberry shortcake doll and she smells filthy but you know what I did I took off her clothes and put them in the soaker you know in the little sink that I had you know with ivory soap soaking and I'm surprised it's an anatomically correct butt. I didn't know they had anatomically correct butts for the strawberry shortcake dolls. Or I'd have been flipping BAs with them. But anyway, I put their clothes in because I didn't want to put the doll in that hot of water. And then, you know, I washed her hair. She's got the sticky stuff. I had to do the TikTok haircut with her, too, and cut out all the sticky stuff. And then when I needed to try and wash her body and stuff, too, it's like I still would not put such hot water on the doll and then I went and I blow dried her so that you know any of the the water I got in the cracks you know wouldn't mold but I still wouldn't put that hot of like air on the doll and it was really weird because once I got her kind of clean then she started smelling like blueberry muffin again but she's blueberry muffin and um but I'm just saying like I've never seen a child put anything over a doll's head, a Barbie's head, anything like that. Now, who's to say that she she did this after she'd been with Shanann for six weeks? And what did Shanann say? Shanann said how tough of a time it was when she was in North Carolina because she had to be fighting with the girls every day. Um, ma'am, didn't see she just turned three, so she was like a two-year-old. 
Two-year-olds, as Dr. Phil says, are emotional terrorists. You don't give in to them. You just placate them and you remind them of their boundaries. And safe and healthy boundaries. Not that like you're going to lock them up at the freaking door for 15 hours a day. But, and then Bella is four. So, I have never in my life said to my husband, I was fighting with the kids. She's on their toddlers. My God. How do you, how do you, and, but you know what? She was in that perpetual teenager thing. She didn't act like a mom. She acted like a bad babysitter. And people think that, oh, she's this wonderful mom. Why? Because she was so controlling that she had to keep even calling the babysitters. So you think because she calls the babysitters to be sure that, because she doesn't want the babysitters to get them off of their precious routine. That's all that was. So everybody thinks, oh, she's the best mom because look at she just calls all the time and does that. So doting, right? No, it's controlling, obsessive, weird behavior. And like um, one of our, our uh, truth warriors on here said, she's glad that she didn't have um, cell phones in the age where she had babysitters because she was paying them to watch the kids so she could have some time off. And that's the truth. That when you do get a babysitter, it is for you and the child to get a break because you cannot always do it. You know, it's, it was really tough. Um, you do need a break when you can get a break. Enjoy it. You don't sit there and just obsess. Like I said, the only thing it was about was about if they were in bed by the routine. You know, it wasn't that, oh, she's such an attentive mom. Hello. Hello. So, yeah, back to Dollgate. So here we are on page 1913, the continuation of um, 2107 and the discovery. And it's um, in the bracket where it's it's tacked at the 41 tack TL hyphen 7299 tax 7300 so it it has it you know what those will trace back to whatever that's that's how this would all be you know searched out in in a trial should there have ever been one and again it says this image was taken by watts's phone which he sent to shanann she replied don't know what to think about this the sheet is all over wrapped around the face the doll is on two pillows the feet are propped up on the pillow. It's weird. It's really weird. The image is called 7836. And then it says at 1337 hours. So he sent it to her at 15 minutes to noon. At 137, Shanann sent a photograph to Sarah Nudd. The image of this letter she wrote to Watts. Okay, so... That's where I got mistaken here where I said that part because I thought she sent that photograph to Nud. Um, she sent this letter, this little letter with all the hearts and everything so nice about what Shanann... Shanann expressed hopes that Watts would respond with a letter of his own, okay? So what I infer from this, Watts took this image sent to Shanann. She replied, don't know what to think about this, dot, dot, dot. I thought she then sent it to, sh to Sarah Nudd and then put it on her Facebook, but no, it was a picture of the letter that she did, the sweet little letter, right? So everything, she's just sweet little Shanann, just a little wilting daisy that just doesn't know how to express herself. So he sent it to her. He was with the girls when it happened, the doll gate. He took the picture, sent it to her. Obviously, she put it on her Facebook to make a joke out of it, like, and she, I think she... Didn't she even write, like, don't know what to think about this or something, right? So. The other image that was shared was the. Okay, because it, the day before. 1006, Shanann shared an ultrasound picture image of her unborn son with Sarah Nudd. So Sarah, she said she shared that with Sarah Nudd, the ultrasound picture. And then you go to the next part where it's just 2107. And then at 1444 hours at the top, this image was taken by Watts's phone, which he sent to Shanann. She replied, don't know what to think about this. Now, the next thing it says, 1337 hours, Shanann sent a photograph to Sarah Nudd. 
the image of this letter she wrote to Watts. Below that is the letter. So I see how it would be very, very easy to look at what it says underneath the, pro the photograph and say, where you could say, Shanann sent a photograph to Sarah Nudd, the image of this letter she wrote to Watts. But it's the letter because a, on top of the picture, it says this image was taken by Watts' phone, which he sent to Shanann. She replied, don't know what to think about this. So it's very easy to see something um, different on the first look. And then if you're just going by just the Facebook, and if you just saw uh, her Facebook and saw that she did that, then yeah, everybody would say, look at what Shanann put on her Facebook and thought that, that, you know, this happened while she was taking care of them. Very easy to, to say that. That's why it's like you have to totally totally look at everything with a fine tooth home and a fresh brain. So I'll do this where I'll get I don't know if I can get the page number in there. Yeah, I can get the page number. So nineteen twelve discovery page. I gotta do it sideways, but so 1912 of 1960, discovery page 2107. You can see where it says that right there. And then we'll go down below where it says, Shanann sent a photograph to Sarah Nudd, the image of this letter she wrote to Watts. Okay, and this is this letter. It's just so hard to read. And it's like, oh, my dearest Chris with a heart, I don't know where to begin. I am so lost for words. Can't ever explain this level of pain we've had these past few weeks. I missed everything about you. Loving you, touching you, blah, blah, blah. So I can't read that. But it's like, I really don't know how I feel without anything. But this is what people saw, okay? They did not see what happened the week before. Look, we were just talking about one thing and just the affair that she went out there, but that's not the truth. That's why we have due process. We have the whole story. We have everything considered. Let's see here if we go to 1906. Okay. Is that the one here? We go here. Um. Okay, let's see these real things that she was saying to him. Okay, let's go here. This is, well, she's, at the same time, she is saying that, you know, she doesn't know what to say to him. And she's, she's got all of her friends all in this web. She's got every single one of them going from one to the next. Like, he didn't even kiss me at the airport. So, I don't know what's wrong with him. Should I say this to him? And shows us, you know, this very neutral text. She goes out with the, you know, the restaurant owner and it's like, I don't know what to do with Chris, you know, his parents did this and blah, 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 blah. And they're all just rallying around to support her. She is not telling them what she actually is saying to them, which does not warrant whatever happened that night on August 13th. There are three different things to consider. What was going on with her, what was going on with him, and what happened that night. It is not black and white whatever happened that night, okay? And the handmaid's tale is a whole a whole other thing too. Because if you took each action that the handmaids did in season five and just looked at it on the surface, like, whoa. These girls just well, I don't want to spoil it. You're like, wow, put every one of them under the jail. Oh no, no, no. You don't know that for the four years prior, they were subjected to unspeakable torture imprisonment, demeaning, 
demeaning, degrading treatment. But if you take that one thing, then it's black and white. And some people are not able to think the whole way through. And that's why mainstream media is a thing. And they just, they, they read it, oh yeah, and then they go and repeat it. Oh, and they're the problem in our society. Look what they've done. You can't buy eggs now. I don't even know that Easter eggs are going to be a thing this year because freaking eggs are more than steak. You know, let's hide steak instead of Easter eggs because it'd be cheaper than, I mean, HOA would allow it in mine. <laughs> we pay our HOA dues, too. Or at least I think my husband is. He gets the mail. Should I be suspicious? I'd have a chicken or two. Anyway. <laughs> I think chickens are beautiful. Um, there were, I, <laughs> I was doing this survey thing a while back, and it was like facts and whatnot, or whatever. It was some, for some study. And they kept putting up this picture of a chicken. And it's like, is this beautiful? And I was like, yes, pushing the yes. And then, it, you know, four questions later, keep pushing, you know, is a chicken beautiful? Yes. Well, after the 80th time, they kept repeating the freaking chicken question. And I put no. Then, gee, the whole thing was over. I did a great job. But I don't see how you can be. That's a subjective question. People see beauty in all kinds of things. And a lot of people really like their chickens. I think a chicken can be beautiful. Absolutely. And it's beginning beautiful. I am not jealous of I don't I don't see how that those people can sit there. That's just I don't know. It's like some kind of buzzword that they do. Oh, you're jealous of her. You're jealous. What the what would I be jealous of? What what would I be jealous of? Her success? No. Of her lies? No. Um I'm not jealous and I can tell you that at age 34 to age 36, I can tell you that I had no problems with the way I looked, according to most. I think that her and I put together, I don't think that I would have a problem holding my own with looks. Now, now I'm 50 and I've been through some shit. Rode hard and put up wet. You know, I'm not that great to look at, but... <laughs> Well, anyway, um, I just don't get the jealous thing. What would I be jealous of? What would I be jealous of? It's beyond me. Jealous of mistreating my children. Jealous of because I actually was present and raised my children. What, am I, what would I be jealous of? Um, Watts the Obsession put up a really good um, point. And it has, you know... Shanann being depicted of Benny Hana in Bella's hair. She's giving a male haircut. She's cutting Be Bella's hair like a boy. That is not the way you cut a little girl's hair. And she has a side by side picture. And she put Bella in a little wig, um, like a yarn wig, for Halloween. And she laughed about it. She's like, oh, it's the dog doll Bella wants is long hair. Ha, 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 ha. And then in the same post, it says um, in, the, in the post that she was doing, um, it showed Bella pulling Cece down by her earlobe. Now, I didn't have my glasses on. And I thought it was posted by a different creator. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, you need to watch Wait a minute. I just mixed those up too. I mixed it all up. Because 
Neeks Peaks did one. Okay, hold on. Did, yeah, okay, so they, okay. I combined the two. Sorry, this is my middle of the night stuff I do. <laughs> oh, and no, I don't take Ambien or anything else. But anyway, what's the obsession? She put um, MLM per perfect posts. Bella puts pull CC by ear, sit down. Where would Bella learn that behavior? Where would Bella learn to pull by an earlobe? To sit down, okay? Well, I see that Kelly from What's the Obsession is getting attacked for that. She had to put up this thing. It says, for those who feel this is a harsh, it says hash video should be harsh. Please understand, it is the pattern that is troubling. And I feel that the MLM was the driving force behind all the madness. I have many videos about the family dynamic, and this is one take, and I'll stand by it. I personally don't feel Shanann was all bad at all. I'll stand by that too. No one should have take all or nothing perspective. Reality is not all or nothing. I, I feel so bad because anytime Kelly tries to show the truth, um, she has the people who are like, oh, you're bashing a dead No, she's not. Kelly has worked her butt off and Kelly, Kelly does make good money now on her, her page and she has earned it. But Kelly should have the right to show what she feels is part of the truth and whatnot. And it's not the MLM that made her do anything. She'd been doing MLMs the whole time. And Hisham wasn't an MLM. And she was allegedly embezzling by him and lying to her husband, not coming home at night, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the MLM is as responsible for her behavior as Baby Wise is responsible for her parenting techniques. As I went and dispelled the legend that baby wise told her to lock the girls up and do all this insane other things she was blaming it on a book that other people didn't question her on because oh well she must be an expert wow i'm not as that as dedicated as her wow she's the best one and she does this because she no like i say her behavior is to mlm as her parenting behavior is to baby wise now, the other creator, <laughs> this is my middle of the night. Okay, so Neeks Peaks did this one. So she shows the the horrible head, the horrible haircuts that Shanann's giving Bella, and she sent it to to Frank. Or she put the um, Halloween video, and then I guess this was put in the other by Neeks Peaks. And it shows Bella was so excited to have hair. And then she wrote, this is Shanann writing. This is Shanann writing. And then she sent it to her dad in Halloween of 2017. She wrote the words. Bella was so excited to have hair, dot, dot, dot. Hashtag broke my heart. Hashtag Halloween costume. Hashtag bet you can't guess. And then the emojis of laughing so hard you cry. And it's with Bella having the biggest smiles of her life with the little mermaid ha hair. And in the other picture, it shows Shanann just whacking off Bella's hair. I would never, ever, ever cut a little girl's hair like a boy. And I'm not saying that I did too many home haircuts, but the, oh my, oh, the pandemic was rough. And I, I made my son look, his hair look like a frenulum. I mean, the poor kid looked like a dickhead. I'm not kidding you. And it was terrible because I had the, um, the clippers. I think what I have a two and a four. I didn't have a three. So, you know, I was like, how hard can this be? You know, I'll just do this, you know, and go, or maybe I had a one, two or three, whatever. The, the middle one wasn't there. So I, you know, shaved up and it looked great. And then that blending part just wasn't there because the one and, oh, you look like a frenulum. Or not a frenulum, uh, what do you call it? The part of the dick that, the, is that a precipice? What is, 
I don't have to Google this. But anyway, anyway, you just had just look like a dick, like the the round part of the dick, and then that, and I mean he knew it. His brothers knew it. It. His sister knew it. And we all laugh about it to this day. But um, my my daughter's hair, you know, is very fine Norwegian. And so it's like, you know, we just didn't mess with it. The one time when my husband took her twin brother and next oldest brother on base to get their haircuts, they mistook her for a boy. <laughs> they thought it was three boys instead of two boys and a girl because they're all the same size, look like triplets. So they buzz cut her <laughs> she was like two <laughs> it was so bad but I mean her hair grew right back out and then we always just kept her in it you know a little cute blonde straight cut bob um she wasn't one for wanting anything feminine in her hair or whatnot she's grown up with boys and stuff so she didn't want anything you know frilly or pretty but she looked just so cute a little bob and then um her hair would grow out and I'd take her to get her hair done with me and then she did hair modeling as well um with me so it was cool she got hooked up with a lot of free incredible services um as did I because sometimes I'd like a couple of times I'd just drive her in for hers and they were like hey our other model didn't show you want to you want your hair done I'm like yeah so I mean I would just never ever ever do anything like that never like I say, even on my boys, I'd be reluctant to do a haircut like that. But she's standing there and she's doing this. So I think that she's like emulating her mom doing haircuts, but a boy haircut. And in all of the Watts things that I could see before I got kicked out, um, so many people said, why was she making her girl look like a boy? Did they want a boy that bad that they were doing that? I mean, it's sad. She should have just left her hair alone. And you saw in the final six weeks when the girls were able to be spoiled by the grandparents and it should have been all four grandparents but you know nutgate napgate happened but bottom line she wasn't checked in with a kid she was still going on her MLM trips and trying to convince the other one to you know leave his wife allegedly um their hair was growing. It was growing beautifully. Why wouldn't they have just waited until Sandra Honorati Rusick could cut their hair? Why not just wait for Grandma? When Grandma was in the home, why why not just wait for Grandma to do it when she comes and visits? Why not? They're, if, if It's really easy with a girl if they get, if their hair is growing out, you just put it in a barrette or you, you know, put a ponytail it's not like anything's going to happen. You just let it grow. She wasn't that aggressive towards Cece's hair. And I wonder why. So when she's simultaneous to what, because they were putting in here what he was doing, you know, with the Nicole Watts, or Nicole um, Kessinger, what they weren't showing was what she was doing with her friends in this part of the discovery. But they do have this. So while she's doing this with all of her friends, so a week before, so let's go back up here to... So we go to discovery page 2098. So discovery 2098. And we go to page... We're going to go to 1903. And I can do a better job of this later. I can put more of the text that she was simultaneously giving her friends because we do have that um, accessible that wasn't in here. We go to 1903. So he was screwing around with his secret calculator. Oh, I asked my husband about the secret calculator. And either he's a real good liar but he didn't, he acted like, acted like he didn't, he'd never heard of anything like that before. If we were looking at this black and white, 
and oh we just think this is what happened and while she is there and she's doing this even if she's ragging him out he's putting all this stuff in their nude pictures of his girlfriend at the same time you can say oh yeah what a monster he deserves to be underground is that the price of an affair do we give life without the possibility of parole for an affair because if we look at just this part that's where we are so August 4th we go August 4th 2018 and we start out at 0336 in the morning so 336 in the morning and Shanann says truth came out last night now, remember, they're together. They're in the same motel room, right? They're in the same motel room, and either daddy's there to help with the kids, because they can't manage to do anything on their own, but either way, this is when Christopher is in North Carolina. They're there together. He's checked out. He's thinking about NK and that's how he is dealing with this because he's not dealing with her he's not engaging with her he's not playing this what she's saying is she says truth came out last night i didn't create no dagger between you and your dad that was done by your mom and your dad and i won't change a thing my daughter's life is way more important and you better believe i wanted to say a whole lot more than i did but i was being the bigger person and protecting bella I didn't tell your dad not to come to party. I didn't tell him not to text or call your daughter on her birthday. I didn't tell him to start acting like he only has two grandkids instead of four. I didn't block your family on Facebook. Hold on just a second. I'd love to mark this to see how many minutes I'm in if I start this. I need to do that. Because a lot of people have not heard this. Um, this side of it. Because they only saw, oh, you know, she just didn't know how to express herself, sweet little thing. Okay. Y'all know I'm drinking my lemon tea, don't you? My lemon loaf tea. So it says, I didn't block your family on Facebook. He did. Myself and your kids have nothing to say to them. They do. They owe your kids their life. Why do they owe Chris's kids their life? Why do they owe? I don't get that. Why do they owe them their life? doesn't make sense to me it's very dramatic very histrionic and then it says your parents home isn't a safe zone your mom isn't safe exclamation mark you can let them tell you what you want but I didn't tell anyone to stop loving your kids or stop acting like it he did that not me so we're talking here about Papa Ronnie. Seems like a very nice person. That she... She went for. She's creating the Watts to be these monsters. I don't see how you can pick on Papa Ronnie like that. Oh, because Papa Ronnie won't, won't engage. That's why. And then this, this whole analogy with the dagger, I don't get. It's just very uh, dramatic, I guess. That's all I can say. It says, you can believe I created this dagger, 
But I didn't do that. I stood up for our kids. I advocated and protected our children. I don't ever want to hear, I'm sorry I killed your kid because I was stupid. That would kill me. These kids are my world and I have to protect them from the evil of the world. I shouldn't have to protect them from evil family. Why are we putting this as the Watts being inherently evil? There's a lot of things here. There's very dramatic wording. Um, very, very life or death. Very, very histrionic. Now remember, this is just over Cindy having a party with all of her grandkids. She believed that Cindy Watts tried to kill her daughter in that. This is what this is about. They're in the same room and she is texting out this manifesto. says, our kids deserve the same love and attention the other kids get. Nothing less. I'm not accepting I'm sorry from your mom. Because she doesn't mean it and she knew what she was doing. I made it very clear not to eat it around Celeste because she doesn't understand. Way before that happened. She is evil and willing to risk your daughter's life just to get under my skin. You and your dad are no different if you are okay with her behavior. There's nothing wrong with me, and I'm not crazy. I just love my kids way too much. Oh, okay. So now they're evil, inherently evil killers. Let's look at this. Because she says, she made it very clear way before that happened. So she must have taken Cindy to the side and said, don't you eat that ice cream around my child because she doesn't understand it. What alternatives did she offer? Did she say, hey, if you guys have that ice cream, she can only have this or whatever. So I got this for her. So this is Cece's ice cream when everybody else gets the ice cream. Or have the ice cream when she's in a nap. But you know what? The girls had ice cream and cake the last day of their life at a birthday party. When she wasn't there, nothing happened. The Thrive products before 2018, I believe, had not put disclaimers on their things that they were not um, that they were peanut and I, I don't I shouldn't speak on that because I've been told that so I shouldn't speak on that but I've certainly seen things in her home that have been pointed out like the big thing of peanut butter in the pantry and some of the MLM products that were not compliant it's not that oh, okay I, I'm not going to go there I'm not going to go there because I don't have it to cite, but anyway. Let's talk about sweet little Shanann who doesn't know what to say to her husband anymore. And she's sending all these messages to her friends that she just doesn't know what to say. He's just over there. And then meanwhile, this is what she's saying. She just loves her kids. From the day I left, you never said I missed you before I said it. Something changed when I left. You may be happier alone, and that's fine. You can be alone. This pregnancy, you have failed to acknowledge it or to acknowledge how I'm feeling. The first trimester is the scariest and most dangerous, yet we can lose this baby at any point till delivery. So she's using this pregnancy to manipulate and 
using the pregnancy essentially as a weapon. That, you know, look at this. If anything happens, it's because of you. You wanted this. You don't know. I don't think that he ever wanted to have another pregnancy with her, quite honestly. Then she says, I'm not going to be treated this way for having the balls to protect our family and kids. I should get a gold fucking medal for handling it the way I did because I had a lot of choice words I wanted to say to her and your dad for his stupidity. And she goes on to say, no one stands up to your mom and your dad for that. He's just as guilty by not doing anything. I have nothing to do with him. Stop sharing memories of his grandkids. What does that have to do with me? They are fucking with our kids' feelings, and I'm not okay with that. I am their mother, and I will protect them. I have enough to worry about with the world out there. I'm not going to worry about family. I will just remove it. So that was her sentiment at 3.36 in the morning. That's not good for the baby being like that, right? And that was all in one message. And then at 5.13, she says, I also don't control what you do. If you want to go hang out with your parents today, by all means, do so, but without us. Don't put it on me as to why you can't go. You are your own person. 726. Watts replied to Shanann for the first time. So after all of that through the night, he says, he, do, he says, these kids mean the world to me and I always will. Yes, my mom truly screwed up in a huge way, more than a huge way. I don't know what I would have done if something happened to Cece. Those kiddos are the light of my life and seeing their sweet, incredible smiles and playfulness makes me smile every day. I'm sorry for the way I've been acting. It's just been in my head and I haven't been right at all. Five minutes later, they're in the same thing. She responds, bye. Yes, that I created this dagger between you and your dad. That wasn't me. That was them. I protected your daughter from their stupidity. They created that and you belong with them thinking otherwise. I didn't tell your dad to remove himself from the kids' life. I did and do not deserve to be treated the way that you have. I defended our daughter. Fifteen minutes later, again, they're in the same thing. They're pecking these out. Watts replies to Shanann. Yes, you protected our daughter, and I will thank you for that a million times a million. I don't think that they're innocent in any of this. They do want to be in the kids' life. I'm not sure they even know how to right now. They should have swallowed whatever they needed to and came to Cece's birthday party and called her and shouldn't have blocked all social media contact with them. I don't care what they do with us, just as long as they love and respect the kids. I'm not used to having a relationship. I'm used to not having a relationship with my dad. I should have just called him before it got to this point where it got in my head. I didn't, and that's my fault. Here they are, same motel room, 15 minutes later. Shanann responded, Why should you beg to be the, in their life? They picked up phone and apologize for starters. They pick up phone and apologize for starters. They showed up to her birthday, especially since they were an hour away. They did this. They make the effort. You blame me for this so-called dagger between you and him? Fuck that. You are just like them. Believe what he tells you and move back home where you weren't appreciated when I met you. No one ever protected you from your mom and someone should have before me. I'm done being the bad guy in all of this. Especially when I had more balls to stand up for you a long time ago with them. My bad for thinking you deserve better. 
not my kids. It's weird this sentence says, not my kids are in the pick and I'm done. I don't understand that sentence. Not my kids are in the pick and I'm done. I don't get it. She further stated, and again, they're in the hotel room, so this is 11.53 hours, so we're going from 8, so 7 minutes to noon. She says, well, it's on my mind. If I'm in the wrong, that's one thing. But I'm not here, and you standing up for us and the girls is not cool. This makes no sense. If I'm in the wrong, that's one thing. But I'm not here... And you not standing up for us and the girls is not cool. I don't get that. Just make it so they feel they did no wrong and brush it under the rug. I will never trust your parents alone with our kids ever. E-V-E-R in capitals. This is the week we started dating eight years ago. They ruin everything special. I won't forgive you or them for that. I'm tired of it. I'm the one that takes care of you, not them. You make me feel like complete shit these last several weeks, especially this week, and I'm not okay with it. And I won't change my ways when it comes to our kids. And I always defended you. Always. A couple minutes later, she added, I'm not asking you to choose who to be with. I shouldn't have to ask you to choose right from wrong. You're not happy? then you know where to go. Dot, dot, dot. Worst summer ever. I don't get that. I don't get that. A lot of people would be very, very thankful and grateful to have parents that welcome them back into their home and love their grandchildren. And an hour away, you have the other set of grandparents who love them as well. And while they may not come up to her level of expectations, there's certainly grandparents that would be appreciated by many, many people. Most. That ridiculous crapola about razor blades being all over the home. Um, one of you truth warriors told me that what they had was one of those ceramic, um, the, you know, the tops of the ovens that had that ceramic top. They had one of those razor blades to clean it off. With those ceramic tops, even water, if it like boils over, it leaves like this gritty burn thing. And so you're supposed to, rather than, because you can wash it off, you know, and use all the elbow grease in the world. But what you're supposed to do is you just take this little, this tool that, you know, you can get for them. I think they might even enclose one when you buy it new. I don't know. But it has like a handle and you just, um, you scrape it off. You just use that little razor blade that's on it and you scrape it off. Um, and apparently they had that by the oven as, as one would. Maybe they just got done using it. Maybe it was towards the back and the counter and everything. Um, I don't see that as any different than having knives in a, cutting board on a kitchen. There's not razor blades all over. And when she said that, she did that to enhance her histrionics to a new level. When she called her dad, which I believe that her dad can be reasonable and fair without the influence that Mama Ru puts on him. So she called Daddy, says, come get me. They just tried to kill Cece, and they've got razor blades all over the home, blah, blah, blah. He gets her, gets her in the truck, and he's like, what do you mean razor blades? Like, he's getting ready to go into this house. And see, and she's like, well, just don't go in there, don't go in there. And she backed off the razor blade theory, because I have no doubt that Frankie would have walked in there and been like, um, what kind of Derelicts are you, you have razor blades all over and you have all these kids visiting? What is wrong with you? 
he would have wanted to see this for himself. And if they had razor blades all over, they'd been like, yeah, you know, we play Twister with them. You know, and it's a kind of a, a way that we play Twister and we all hold razor blades at each other's throats while we do it. You know, what kind of an answer was there going to be? Couldn't imagine what this was. But as it was one in the kitchen by the stove, that makes the most sense because it's probably the truth. It's easy to get frustrated as a parent when the older generation doesn't understand how neurotic we are about childproofing. Our generation in, in 2018 has heard all of the tragic stories that make the headlines about accidents that have happened. We don't have the perspective of the whole entire thing that, you know, this didn't happen, this didn't, you know, these kinds of things are there all the time and this doesn't happen, but we're hearing about that, okay? So even me, you know, I was really, you know, frustrated because my mother-in-law had these spindles in the risen dining room where it'd be easy for my babies to crawl through them and fall to the next level of home. And so I bought um, these, these things, you know, to cover that. And my husband was too afraid to put them up. I'm like, I'm not going to leave them for the weekend unless these are up. And, you know, and he didn't. And, of course, you know, my baby fell go to the next level, level, but, you know, I wasn't allowed to make a big deal out of it because, you know, oh, oh, you know. But anyway, I understand that on the level of a parent. I really do. But there's a, a line of logical, and then there's neuroticism, And you have to see, is this because of the safety concern for the baby? Or is this because you're trying to control the situation? What we know is what happened the day before in Nutgate. We know about Napgate. And um, Seeking the Truth with Dave did a really good job interviewing Cindy Watts on that. So I'll let, I'll let you guys check out Napgate with him on that. Um, basically, it's that, you know... Shanann went in the middle of when all the girls, all the, when the girls were having a lot of fun with their cousins and said, come on, it's nap time. And Cindy made the mistake of, oh, come on, they're having fun. Let them skip the nap. Oh, that's the kiss of death. You don't question her. You don't tell her that. She doesn't care if they're having fun. She didn't care about the quality of their life. She cared about the routine and how that routine made her life easier. When you're a parent... You don't do that. It doesn't work. So anyway, the words I'm reading are words that I've heard in the past. I know that other people have heard in the past. These are words that are spoken when somebody emotionally abuses you. They tell you that you're not good enough. If you, if you don't have me, you're not going to get any. No one's ever going to want you. Why am I going to put you back where, you know, everybody, you know, walked all over you. You know, I'm the one who saved you. You should be thankful you owe me your life. Go. Go where everybody's stupid. It's where you belong. Go. You're not worth anything. Go. Yeah, before me, you had nothing. You'll have nothing in you. But those are words that are spoken by an abuser. Those are the words she spoke to him. Does that make me a CW sympathizer? Does that make me a, a basher? No, it doesn't. It's showing how this was rising and rising to a temperature in which no one was going to get out alive. 
It was in a pressure cooker. It was, it was a frog in the hot water, slowly, slowly, slowly turning over. He's doing his best to not engage with her. And whatever that was taking for him to do, he was doing. Do I blame, oh, I got that the other day too, that I, do I blame all women when their husbands have affairs? No, but when the woman starts it and she's out of town all the time with other men, taking pictures of other men and out and whatnot, I wouldn't say that, um, I would blame him if he went and, started some of his own. If the marriage is over, get a divorce. That goes for both of them. Turns toxic, go, go your separate ways. She had options. She absolutely had options. The thing that was the worst summer of her life, people would love to be able to go and spend it on the beach and have grandparents like that. Just ungrateful. So freaking ungrateful. And then while she was there, what she traveled to Florida and, and where Virginia or DC, I don't remember, somewhere else. She did, she managed to fit in two other little MLM trips while she was there. Let me tell you, she did not earn all of those. Could she have earned a couple of them? Mm, yeah, by deceiting and playing with the numbers, she did. But there is nobody, nobody in an MLM that wins, wins all of these vacations, flights, hotel stays. No, it didn't happen. I know that people are so brainwashed into believing that she earned all of this. She didn't. I'll explain in depth one of these days. What do you want? If I stop this, and then you don't come and cuddle me, what's going to happen? Huh? Not, oh, I don't want to see your chocolate starfish. Okay, so. While this is going on, while she is doing this, Kessinger, wherever she is in the world, searched Google for Watts and Shanann's Facebook names, account. So she's checking shit out, right? Um, at that very day, this is where the girls were on the trampoline at Pavilion Park, where she forbade Bella to jump on the trampoline with Cece. So they're out there having this fun, and she is sitting there writing this vitreous, vitriolic spew to him, and he can't get mad. He can't do anything. I do believe that um, this is when they were at that water park too. The one where, um, well, let me see. I don't know how to explain this. Where she made um, Christopher get up and grab the girls because Bella was being pretty obscene with the uh, water spouts. Um, really disturbing. Really, really disturbing. I mean, the kids were acting out in ways because the parents were toxic. Now it says here, Shanann asked Watts in text why, why they couldn't talk, you know, oh, cause she didn't have it scheduled to talk. She said, are you wanting to go see mama tomorrow or family too? And Watts replied, I was hoping both. If not, that's okay. I just wanted to see mama in the morning. If possible, you wanted the girls to see her too, right? Shanann responded thrice. So three times, if both, that's fine, but alone. If just mama, we will go. They saw her twice and they can go again, but I'm standing strong with your family. So you can use a truck and see both, but I just need to know. I'm not going to be reason you don't see them. So if you go, just go. Boo boo, no, boo boo, boo boo, no, no, boo, what do you want? So, um, these are just some of the points that a lot of people have had questions on. I wanted to review. Um, and it says here, you know, that they would, Chris says they would love to see mama one more time. I bet mama would love to see them too. Since she remembers them and mama, they're doing M A W M A W. I think that, you know, that's the grandma. 
and she says she doesn't want to leave alone. He doesn't want to leave alone without a car though either. Should have someone pick me up at nursing home so the girls can still see Mama. And she writes, and I mean this is the thing. They're in the same hotel room. They're they're basically, I don't I don't get this why they're doing this, but um. She says in two messages, it says. I'm not going to be where there's a chance you'll run into your family. I'm not kidding, Christopher. I'm having a bad experience these last few days with my pregnancy, and I'm spotting. I'm not dealing with it. Have your parents pick you up when you go down tonight, and then and do what you need to do. And then it says, you know, he goes, I want the kids to see Mama. I'll make sure there's no chance anyone will see them. And then she wrote this quote, which, you know, narcissists love to do. You know, they put this thing about husbands stand up for your wives, right? And then she writes two hours later, I don't know how you fell out of love with me in five and a half weeks or if this has been going on for a long time, but you don't plan another baby if you're not in love. Kids don't deserve a broken family. I left you. You couldn't take your hands off me. You show up and I have to basically practically ask you for a kiss in an airport. Then she adds, being away from you, it's not the help I missed because I can handle that. It was exhausting. But with school, that's not hard. I miss the smell of you, you touching me while I'm cooking, you touching me in bed, touching me, period. I missed holding you and snuggling with you. I missed eating with you, watching TV with you. I missed staring at you and I missed making love to you. I missed everything about you. I couldn't wait to touch you and hold you and kiss you and make love to you smell you, laugh with you. I couldn't wait to celebrate eight years with you. If you're done and don't love me, and don't want to work this out, not happy anymore, and only staying because of kids, I need you to tell me. And then at, at 11, she has said, would you stay with me if we didn't have kids? And then she writes again, I don't get it. You don't fall out of love in five weeks. And then she said, how can you sleep? Our marriage is crumbling in front of us and you can sleep. Now, this is where she was telling her friends that, you know, she's initiated all this. She's done this. And he's over there asleep on another couch. And so Chris obviously wakes up and reads these. And then he searched in Google the distance from the moon to earth. And then, um. Uh, Shadan wakes up saying, and it says it, it proves that messages have been deleted from Watt's phone because they're not there. Shadan noticed, noted in messages, your only response last night was, I don't want to lose the kids. You used me just to have a boy. Only reason you wanted another kid. I can't handle this and you're okay with it. Why didn't you just tell me you were done? Why get me pregnant? And he replies, I'm not staying because of the kids. They're my light, and that will not change. I didn't fall out of love in five weeks. That's impossible. I don't want to erase the eight years just like that. I'm not sure what's in my head. I don't know if it's my parents, the third pregnancy, or if I'm scared or what. I, I didn't use you. And then she says, that's what you said last night. You can't even say why you're married to me. That's a stab in the heart. You didn't say you didn't want to lose us. You said if, if you didn't want to lose the kids. Watts responded, I don't want to lose anyone. And Shanann responded, this has been the worst week of my life. We were supposed to celebrate love and family, but instead hate and whatever you call it. I'm not willing to watch something dangerous happen to one of our kids with your family for you to wake up. They will give you sorry excuses today. I don't know what to say. I don't want to come. And she continued, you don't see you or how you're treating me. Eight years of love and you're treating me horribly. I fell deeper in love with you this summer. You fell out. That's not love. Love falls deeper in love when apart, not out. You don't love me or you have a horrible way of showing it. You haven't fought for me this week. It's only the kids. Watts transferred an image of Kessinger into a secret calculator. Watts told Shanann that his parents did not want to drive him to her location. Shanann asked if Watts wanted her to come pick him up, and Watts replied, It's up to you. It's cool. Bring me back first thing in the morning. 
And then at 6.45, she says, We fucking leave tomorrow. I need help. Shanann told Watts she was on her way. He was on her way to pick... She was on her way to pick him up. Apparently, after some cajoling, Watts advised his father has agreed to drive him to her location presently. Watts took various pictures of images inside his parents' home, and they included this in their family portrait. And I put that on the Instagram because I think it's incredible how... Um, Bella looks like Christopher. Shanann told Watts, I was trying to get you to fucking hug me. Make me feel safe. This is much deeper than lack of conversation. Make me feel everything is going to be okay. Watts replied, it'll be okay. This will get fixed. She said, no, I don't need words, damn it. You just told me you don't want this baby. Watts replied, I'm scared, okay? You wanted the truth and I told you how, you felt, how I felt. Shanann replied, you hold me after that conversation? You hold me? If this is how, if you want this to fucking last, you make me feel safe And after that bomb? Don't you get it? Shanann asked, added, how many times do I have to ask you to hold me? You hate me that much. Watt says, I don't hate you. I'll fix this. It will be better. You didn't answer me. I'm begging you to hold me. And you still can't, she added. Watts replied, I don't know where my head is at. I will fix it, though. Shanann wrote, this isn't the only thing. This doesn't get your head all screwed up. Something's changed in the last five weeks. Something you won't say. She continued, all of these asking for you to talk to me. You fall asleep at seven or eight. Don't tell me it's me. It's not communication, and you're not telling me something. So, later in the conversation, I skipped a little bit, but it says to Addie, she told him last night, she said she doesn't feel safe with him after what he said about the baby. And if he loves her, he would want to hold me and tell me it'll be okay. Give me something. He did nothing but go to bed. Okay. So, I just wanted to go over that piece because that's something new. A lot of people did not know about that aspect of their communication. Um, a lot of people have written to me and said, where did I find this? How was this? There are different versions of the discovery out there. I know that there's a lot redacted. I know that I don't have a lot of the supplemental. I have a lot more to read to you guys. I went for the oldest version of the discovery that I could find and went with it because I figured that would have the most possibility of having the most, right? So I want to put something in the title that kind of begins at this, this end conversation the week before so people can easily grab it because they just don't know. They, they heard one thing. That, you know, oh, this beautiful wife with two kids and she's pregnant, goes away to visit her parents, comes back after he, because he started having an affair when she was gone. She comes back with the kids. He decides to annihilate them all so he can be with his girlfriend. They believe that. I can't imagine to be that naive to just believe that would happen. It didn't happen that way. She broke him down. She was abusing him in every single way. That's proven. He had an affair in the last a few months. A trial would have taken all of these things to be considered and measure if what he did was as a result of temporary insanity. How do you have Andrea Gates willingly drown all five of her babies one after the other? After practicing drowning them one after the other, how do you have her sentenced to an institution 
And then she's out, isn't she? And that's because there are reasons behind why a person acts the way that they do act. Let me see. Somebody just asked something here. Somebody just said, where can I find the Dirty South commercial in the prom story? Thank you. Let me see here. Why can't people see my... Do my videos not come up when you push them? Let me see. Let me look something up here. Are you guys um, watching the Daybell case? I really am not. Oh my gosh. Let me see here. Is Andrea Yates free? Let's see. She declines release from mental hospital. So she was free to leave. She doesn't want out. She still continues mental health treatment. So she drowned her five kids in the tub in 2001. She annually declines release from the mental hospital. So she could be. So she was 37 years at the time, suffered from severe postpartum depression, postpartum psychosis, and schizophrenia. According to her testimony, she waited for her husband, Rusty, to go to work. When he was gone, she began to drown. So that shows, you know, premeditated on all levels. She admitted. I tried to bring that up when I was on another creator's channel in the way that I'm saying this, but then I was jumped saying, oh, she had this and that. But I wasn't comparing SW to Andrea Waits. I was saying that if we have a court system that looks at the entire picture and can have somebody argue on your behalf, of you being a victim of emotional abuse, physical abuse, financial abuse, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that he would have. And then I believe that he does have some form of autism as well, that he can't properly emote. Why didn't they do this? If Andrea Yates can be seen as a victim of her own mind, she needed help. Why couldn't Christopher Watts? And like I said, I do not believe that he unalived the girls. I believe that he walked in on her doing it. That's my opinion. That's the way that I feel. I encourage everybody who has a YouTube channel that comes from me and other creators to just start their own channel and see how they feel. And then other people can go and listen if they choose. But it's not normal to go to another creator's page and write paragraphs and capitals when obviously they don't know the facts and the truth. Have they spent over 500 hours researching? No, they haven't. And let me see here. Um, okay. So like I say, I just had a, some thoughts I wanted to close up. I know you guys had more questions about Dollgate and about this last um, week and the things she was saying to him. So those are there um, for you. And like I say, thank you so much for always standing by me, always encouraging me. And thank you for being a part of finding the truth and not part of finding 
of creating more of a problem. And like I say, I have so much more to, to um, talk to you guys about. So I'll end now so that Boo Boo doesn't kill me. And thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Over here. And have a great weekend, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.